Welcome back, guys. We're finally back together by hook or by crook in the back of Andrew's van. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done one of these, mate. That sounds so wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, also right. <laughs> in the back of the van. Yeah. Yeah, it has, mate. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a, a strange day. Strange days is, uh, doesn't give it justice, I think. No, we thought we'd do a um, Christmas special on the bank. We had visions of catching all these big fish that we could put into the podcast and... As you can tell from our demeanour, it probably didn't go as planned. But <laughs> we didn't blank. I'm interested to see what the butt is. Well, we didn't blank. We didn't blank. We no. didn't blank. No. Yeah, I've heard about your interest in seeing the butt. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we both caught a fish, so I think that was semi mission accomplished. We I just, I've just looked at the stand. Look how that's not falling over. I do not know. Well, just don't move. We Trust it not to stay. Staying up by the force. So it is because I actually we're on the wonk as well. Look yeah. at this. I don't know what's going on. Oh well. Right. So um, let's let's set the scene. What happened was um, we went to the Thames, didn't we? We did go to the Thames, and uh, in hindsight, with all, the, with <laughs> all, the, all the signs were there for it to be Shit. buggered, and uh, with, in our pig-headedness, we decided to soldier on anyway, and we got proven wrong. We have we've been to several different places. We've walked miles. We haven't had a. We, I don't think we've even been within a mile of a fish. No, it felt like. no, it doesn't feel. Has it hasn't felt like we've actually been fishing, really. No. Um, it, we've just been walking. We had a, we had a great lunch though. We did have a great lunch. The dirty burgers. You all right? No, that's all right. Sitting on a soup bowl. Yeah. Dirty burgers. Yes. Dirty burgers and a beer. That was nice. Yeah. And so we came down to a canal. Came to a canal. And I took an early lead. Yes. As you'll see here. Look at us two. <laughs> couple of idiots this is the only fish we've had all day i that. hope you just had a bite look at that all day <laughs> it's hard going mate <sighs> but it doesn't matter it's christmas we are awesome anglers we are brilliant. Just, just get this back super serious as well super serious as you can tell right that's one nil i need to catch one now yeah? <laughs> it can't one stay nil. one nil <laughs> stay one it can't nil. stay one nil and then Charlie fluked one. I did. <laughs> I think fluked one, stretching it a little bit. <laughs> through through amazing skill and perseverance, I well, what? this happened. I make that one all. One all. That doesn't count. That's too small. <laughs> anything counts. It's this this hard. Everything counts. See if we can get that one. Two one coming up. Is that better? Yeah, I took my my one off. Right, having hat issues as well. We've we've, um, we've been wearing the hats as well. Like complete idiots, but yeah, and the dog walkers have been. I didn't, you know, I didn't even think about it because I had it over the top of my usual woolly hat. I did, I forgot I had it on. Yeah, I did. And, and every yeah. now and again, someone looked me in a strange way. I thought, bloody hell, I wonder why the, all these female dog walkers get walking past going, hello, yeah. laughing. I'm thinking, <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm having a lot of success with the opposite sex, uh, sex today, and I realized it was them going, just a hat. What a twat. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe it's the key, wear a Christmas hat all year round. I can't get this one to fit properly. It's something to put on my kitchen, but they were very cheap. So it's all the all charts are full of like fiberglass or something. You did so. well, Matt, to get these. Right, okay. So this is the end of season two. We were looking back for the episodes in the pub, and I didn't realise we'd done so many. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And we have we have had quite a few guests on. We've, we've covered quite a few topics, and it's been. Do you remember going back to Hanningford? We were recording four in a day. Yeah. 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 And we had Andy Lush. Yep, had Andy and, Lush, and he was early. He was early and he would sit outside <laughs> and forced him to sit outside whilst we whilst we got our bit done. We, we, we were we were gonna do two before he turned up. We hadn't even done the first one. We were halfway mm. through it, he turned up. So uh, yeah, that was uh, that was quite funny. And then um Andy bless him, he's so keen. We have to say Andy, keep it short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were long days. <laughs> they were long days, yeah, yeah. But it's it, it's it's weird to think of that as this year. It doesn't even feel like this year. No, I know. It seems, it seems like a lifetime ago now. A yeah. lot's happened in that time. It's been good fun. A lot's happened with the podcast. Well, the podcast is growing, um, not in viewership. <laughs> well, it's, it's doing okay. It is, yeah. It's, okay. it's doing all right. It's got, it's got a staunch, uh, yeah. loyal following, which we love. It's um, got in my ears. <laughs> yeah, don't. You're not going to any later. No, it's, I, I actually like it like this. But it's, and it's nice that we What I mean by growing, it's growing itself is growing in mm. that more people are now directly involved with it which is always what we sort of envisaged it but never really knew what direction to do that in and i think we're finding our feet with that now well we're forced to aren't we yeah so that yeah it's kind of like taking a natural progression yeah. so 
In season three, we should have Dave Morris doing um, a lot of the Coyote stuff, the kayak stuff, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Ian Crook's going to do some tech stuff. Mm -hmm. Sean Frousters is going to do uh, from the Tackle Shop perspective, when mm -hmm. there's new releases, so that'd be good. Braddy doing Bradley stuff? Yeah, Braddy's coming on doing Bradley stuff. And now for the Shad with quite possibly the best name in the business, the 13 Fishing. My name's Jeff. These are one of my favourite shads that I don't use anywhere near as much as I should, considering how much I like them. I've got an absolute metric chunk from the leaves, and they are just killer. Unfortunately, I think one of the reasons I don't use them as much is because they only come in one size, which is fine when I'm going out doing the pleasure fishing and stuff, just fishing for myself, going for the bigger perch, and even Xander with these or anything like that. But when it comes to when you need something a bit smaller or anything, like they don't do one. So, got the 13 fish in. My name's Jeff. It's quite wide bodied and uh, shallow. With a nice supple tail with what they call their uh, boot tail design on it. Which of course because it looks a bit like a boot. And then underneath, this is where it really stands out for me. Across the belly, you can see the little exit hole there. There's an air chamber all down the belly side of it. So as long as you keep the hook shank up the top half and don't puncture that air chamber, which it, it isn't it isn't difficult to keep it out of the way, like if I can manage it. <laughs> it will sit when it's on the deck up like a bait fish feeding on the bottom. That tail wagging away, and it's just it's just absolutely killer. It doesn't take it a lot of weight at all so, to get that tail moving either, so you can really use this on a light head and like because you get some of them and you unless you're like three grammar up they just don't do anything like this there's a few I've used a while that I really love the shads but you just can't fish them light because unless you're pulling it fast through the water or like f yeah or just move or like really pulling it up off the deck to get that tail going and you're just fishing it too quick whereas these like takes the minimum amount of weight to get that tail going. This colour is, those that are interested, Mojito. I like the uh, colours like Whitey Tighties and Purple Rain and I think uh, Cinnamon Toast is what's uh, my favourite one's called I think. It's something cinnamon and it's yeah. The, the 13 Fishing, my name's Jeff. Absolutely killer. That uh, feel good. Dipping now. That sounds worse than the bus. <laughs> Depends which side of it you are. Oh, <laughs> what is it? Is it people? No. Tell back to everyone. So, it's a, well, depends which way you're going to watch it. I've got a video coming out next week that we'll also announce this, but a little bit of an exclusive for you guys watching here. Uh, I am leaving Essex. Um, which sounds great, you think, bloody hell, I'll be closer to Andy. <laughs> but actually, I'm moving further away. Uh, I am, me and my family are relocating to the northeast. Uh, I'm going to be living in the closest sort of landmark is sort of Durham, so for anyone knows that sort of area. Um, the sort of backstory to that is the company that owns Hanningfield, where I currently work, also owns a collection of reservoirs in the north, uh, and I've been offered a position to move up there. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I think it's amazing. It's a big, it's a big leap. Me and my wife have lived in Essex our whole lives. Um, our kids were born there, um, but we've, we've been up there a couple of times in the summer. Fell in love with it. Um, this opportunity arose, and we decided to grab it with both hands. Um, who knows? You know, we, we can only see how it goes from here. But we've uh, today actually we've found, we've got our house secured, so we know we've got somewhere to live now. Um, yeah, so we'll see when it goes. But it does put me even further away from Andy than I was previously. So the, 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 we still have the same issue of me doing in-person po podcasts with Andy. But I'll still carry on tapping in with my little bits of video that Andy puts in where I can. And then we are going to be doing some stuff up in the north. Andy's yeah. going to be coming and visiting 
fairly frequently so we will get some bits of both of us in front of the camera as well yeah we'll, we'll work something out but mate from a personal point of view that's brilliant it just you've done really well in the, at Hanningfield you're really good at um sort of pro projecting them on social media and this mm -hmm. was picked up wasn't it yeah higher yeah. up and uh this has come about so well done thank you mate really good appreciate and it also it's a life's a journey isn't it life is a journey and yeah. i know the whole family are really excited about all this. excited yeah all like adventures it's a brand new adventure so much new fishing yeah you know, I'll be doing, I'll be turning, I'll be going to have to buy some tweed because literally 30, <laughs> well, 30 yards, and no exaggeration, 30 yards from my front door is a really, really good salmon and sea trout bait. And I've never caught salmon and I've only ever caught sea trout by accident fishing for grayling. And the membership for that, te for that stretch is 40 quid a year. Oh. So that's, I'll be doing a fair bit of that. We're not having the tattooed oik as a member. I know, I'm going to go topless. <laughs> <laughs> Topless in, in, in thigh waders only. Oh, God. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, that'd be really good. But yeah. obviously, for log uh, logistics, we'll work it out as we yeah. get going. And as in start date as well, I'm not too sure when we're going to start. I'm thinking June. Yeah. But we might do the podcast every other week. Um, just purely to the, for the fact that I'm going to do the other one as well that I do. Yeah. In the, of, the other week. So for work, no, it makes it. Eight. Yeah, otherwise yeah. it becomes, as it is, yeah. um, a biggie. Anyway, right. So, what we thought we'd do, just to finish off, we'd have just recap slightly, and we'll just have a, a, a little wander back down this year. And, Charlie, looking back at the podcast, you've got one in particular, haven't you? Well, we, we had a little discussion about what was our... We, we sort of thought, well, maybe we'll, we'll pick our favourite episodes or moments from episodes over the season. And uh, we were scrolling through, and we got to one which instantly made me smile. I thought, well, that's, that's it, that's all I needed, that's what I needed to find. And it was, I think it was the first episode we had with Tomo. Because we did two, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. I think it was the first one. And um, we were really keen as well. We was, yeah, this is, really, <laughs> this is when we were super organised and doing lots of stuff. Um, Andy had prepared a quiz um, for me and Tomo to battle it out one on one. And uh, I think in Andy's mind, he tailored it towards Tomo <laughs> in some of the. Some of the... Oh, yeah, because you were so, you were, you were absolutely adamant you were going to win. Yeah. So I yeah. thought I'd stitch Charlie I'm, up. I'm a proper nerd when it comes to look for fishing. So... I did, I thought with the guess. I'll yeah, yeah. So it. he thought, oh, he'll stitch me up. Yeah. But as it turns, it turns out, Tomo, as much as he can catch big fish, and if you've followed Tomo on social media or Mollocks, you'll see this week he's caught an absolute monster uh, four pound 15 perch. One out short of five five pounds, which uh, again shows his integrity and his honesty. Um, he can catch big fish, but he's absolutely shit at quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> and I absolutely turned him over. And I'm, I'm sure Andy and his editing magic will now put a little clip of that in yeah. here. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Well, that was early. Is it uh, man's baby one minus? The, the problem is, I've got to remember what I've got. <laughs> I can't even see a bunch no, of No, it's not. No. Okay, it's not. Right. It's a Simon Woodshaw. Three. Two. Oh, I know what it is. It's Shakespeare. I can't remember the name of it. Isn't it? Sorry. I give up. It's a Shakespeare big S. One. Zero. It's a Shakespeare BS, isn't it? it? Look, this is my... T there we go. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, 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 let's yeah, go, let's go, let's let's go number, number two. One nil for me, yeah? I hope someone's keeping score. Well, I hope they <laughs> I, I, I suck at these games. Yeah. I, 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 I'll take it. Nine, eight, seven, six, uh, five, four, I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh! I know it. Abu Toby? Yeah. Yeah. So that ran through. Oh, you've, take mu it. you've muted it. Have I? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, what's that doing there? Abu Garcia Toby. Right, so. Oh. Click, click the cross. There we go. Right. Number Ten. three. Nine, oh, Jesus Christ. Eight, uh, seven, what is six, there? five, <clears throat> four, three. <laughs> That's mine. I designed that look. Come on. <laughs> it's a Molex Fork Flex. Yeah, I designed that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> three nil, just in case anyone's keeping score. Okay, I can go on now. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Oh, can you see that? They're at the bottom. Don't look at the bottom. So you tap the middle of the screen. Nine, oh, I know it is. Eight, seven, How can you see what it is? Is it a mirror's mouse? How did you get that from that? How the fuck? <laughs> is it? Oh, come on. No, I show the people what it is. It. Yeah, it's a mirror's mouse that I can see, but it was a bunch of pixels. <laughs> Joe, this is where my lure buying obsession comes in handy. Right. I've got all these things. I've never caught a fish in them, but...
Right, okay. Last one, yeah? Yeah. I know Maurizio, Maurizio Mule, that's actually the Dude, guy. I know him yeah. as well. I was going to put that. Who yeah. ma- name yeah. me the guy who makes it. Yeah, yeah, I know him. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Got it. Oh, yeah. Atom. Abu Atom, yeah, perfect. Well, well done, done, mate. Well done. Thank you. Five mate. out of five. Are you even beating me to my yeah. lord? <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> that's, that's class. That is class. So, as you can see, uh, I absolutely stitched him up and turned him over. Um, I can't remember if we bothered ble- bleeping his swears, but Tomo, at the best of times, loves a swear, and he definitely, he definitely see, heard a few expletives then. <laughs> well, I was hoping he was going to swear in Italian. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wouldn't have to bleep it then. No. Um, but I, I stitched him up even on, on a lure that he designed I got before him. I so know. That, that, was, that, was, that was the icing on the cake for me. That was funny, wasn't it? Yeah, it was that very was funny. Yeah, that, those quizzes were funny, and... Uh, Andy Lush was good at them as well. Wasn't he was. He absolutely stitched me up. I had no chance. <laughs> but I did put a lot of spoons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, again, there's a running theme there where it gets tailored to tailored to the guest. Yeah. So what's, what out of all the episodes, what what did you decide on for your your moment or episode that you think? Waffle. I like ba- a waffle. Bear with me. So I actually like the Steve Collett one because I don't really, don't Do you really know, know him. It, obviously, um, I wasn't there for that. What involved in it? So I watched it as a viewer. Um, you, you obviously was involved in the conversation, so it's quite different as a viewer of the podcast to, to absorb it in a different way. And Steve, as polarising as Steve can be, and I think he absolutely knows that, it was super interesting, and nobody could deny that. And what the visions that Steve has, and the places he wants to take lure fishing, um, is incredible. And if he gets, like you said in the past, you said these are almost his exact words, if he gets fifty percent done of what he intends to do. Lure fishing would have grown an exponential. That wasn't my favourite one, but I, I'm going I'm to I'm name yeah. two or three. The reason I like that one is what I, what nobody will see, and but you'll know how we do things, mm. is that we try not to talk too much about the topics to the guests before we start recording. Yeah. So I'm downstairs in my kitchen. Steve's there, and we're having a chat about everything in the world. But I, but I wouldn't let him talk about the stuff we spoke about in the podcast. Yeah. So what he was saying to me in my spare bedroom, which is where the podcast studio is, was actually fresh. Yeah. And it was like, yeah. So I knew, I knew snippets, but when he started to put it together, mm. and he, he does, he, he, he tries to come across as a really cantankerous, mm. argumentative mm. person, but actually, once you get to know him, he's the complete opposite. Yeah. So I, I really enjoy, as I like doing all of the guests, because I really enjoyed that one. Obviously, we're getting, getting crooky on Sean Francis on recently, it was really good. Yeah. But I think the one that sticks in my mind is. And it's purely from a, a selfish point of view, but for both of us, really, it's when we won Lake Challenge. Yeah. And then we were recording at Hanningfield two or three days later. Yeah. But it was the sheer it was the sheer volume of work we'd done leading up to that event and doing the event. I was absolutely knackered. Oh, we were both absolutely toasted, weren't we? Yeah. But yeah. T- talking about Hanningfield, I was I didn't I didn't know how I drove there. Yeah. It was like and thinking, what are we doing? Yeah. Then we had that big cake. Yeah, yeah. And, that, <laughs> and it was all the kind of. Um, Rhythm all around that, around all that. So I think what we'll do is just put a little taster in now, so just to remind everybody what happened. I feel like I've been on a massive bender, hungover, worst farts ever. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where that's come from. We've one of the best lure comps there's been. A hundred percent. This whole epic adventure started a week, and, a week and two days ago. Yeah. You smuggled this onto the boat without Andy seeing. That day lives for me, it haunts me, because we made one massive cock up by moving off the fish. I've got goosebumps mm. now telling the tale. I felt now we were unstoppable even though we hadn't caught the fish we needed. Yeah, it was on a run. It was <laughs> darts in the boat, yeah. How did it go, mate? How, how, did we, how did we do? At this moment in time, I haven't got a clue because no. I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I genuinely feel hung over. Yeah, I feel like I've been on... I don't party anymore, I'm too no. old. I feel like I've been on a massive bender, hung over. Mm. My guts are, I'm the worst farts ever. I don't, I don't know where that's come from. <laughs> well, we know exactly where it's come from. It's, it's the... Uh, it's Polish pastry. It's Polish pastries and everything else we ate over the weekend. I blame was, Adrian. Yeah. You haven't even <laughs> yeah. touched the cake yet. No. Which we'll talk about in a minute. No. It smells really it good. It does smell really good. Mm. And I can just see it sliding off that thing at some point, so it's a little bit wearing that. We actually won. There's a lot of bling on the table for yeah, a, a good reason. Yeah, And what was that? Was that... That was the something, yeah. lights. So we won Lake Challenge and we'll go into the nuts and bolts. So it, most of the podcast will be about this because there's loads of stories to tell. Mm-hmm. And it was probably, I, I think it was probably one of the best lure comps there's been. A hundred percent, especially in the UK. Right. So that, was, that was actually quite nice watching that back because I don't, because we were so tired, I don't remember much of that. And I don't, I don't tend to watch the podcast back that I'm in. I'll watch the podcast that I don't, 
partaking. But it was quite nice to see some some snippets of that. And uh, a, it was bloody hot. <laughs> it doesn't feel like that now. It feels like a totally different climate. Um, but uh, yeah, it's quite nice to look back at those those experiences. And it was for me. It was the first. Um, it was a, a, it was my first big tournament win. So it was it was a totally new environment for me. It really it was the first time I'd probably properly felt like I was competing because I've, I've dabbled in little competitions in the past but you know, you're, you're pool spotter 90% of the time you're pool spotter it was the first one that I'd had a partner who who all thought and take it seriously we could both push on and do something serious with it so it, it was good it was totally different it's uh, how you do it so regularly and how the, these guys do these comps so regularly I couldn't do because it was too it burnt me out too much <laughs> but it and it was it's such a high level of you feel like you're like this all the time, all the way through the competition for three days. You're like everything's tensed. Do you remember the last two hours? Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, vividly. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's about the only part of it I remember really vividly is, is having. I think it was the first morning when we all shot, and everyone followed us down the same part of the resi. Yeah. And but I, I've been out, we'd been out before we knew where the fish were. Yeah. And, I just, and I said, look, Charlie, that nobody's near us. Yeah. And we just started drifting, caught us to Zander really quick, and we just, I just knew we offered a really good start. Yeah. So that was good. That we were very chilled out. Then. It was. It was the nicest thing about that competition. Like you fish competitions quite often where you're in and around people, and really it's a little bit of a roll of the dice with who happens to catch the fish. What we've done is we've completely bucked trends and we had our ideas and where we wanted to go and catch fish. We pretty much fished that competition and how we wanted to fish it yeah, and yeah. it paid off. And it wasn't doing the same thing as everyone else was doing in the same places. And that was really nice. That's what I liked about it. And you don't get enough of that because we have such little water in the UK. You can't help but tread on each other's toes a little bit. Well, so, rotten water, they don't want big enough to is it, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even even Grafham, you know, Grafham's not that big. You know, you, you look at some of these competitions on, on the continent and in America and they're talking hundreds of thousands of acres. So. I know we've said this a million times, but the bit we've got to mention is when we looked at the scorecards, at the mm. end, two hours from the end of the third day, yeah. and we're level with Tom and Kev. Literally. And then we've had to phone the organisers to find out what happens. And they have told us that the biggest fish counts and they had a pike two centimetres longer than our biggest. It's like, yeah. and I just thought, what, try to work out what to go for because I've got to catch one very, very big fish. Yeah. And Charlie just turned around to me and said, Go catch a 30 pound pike. We know yeah. you can do that. I, just, I looked at him and thought, Mate, we've got two hours. He just went, Yeah, you can do it. It was, and I just thought, Oh, let's go and do it. Yeah. We didn't. No. We caught but, another good big Xander instead. But, but it goes to show if you've got the right attitude. Yeah. You know, yeah. the positive meant PMA. PFA is what I like to call it. Do you remember, I, I just turned the boat around and we shot off back yep. down the resi doing a really fast 5.8 miles per hour. Yep. Yeah, yes. But you're Eastering. having to pass me stuff out of my tackle box so yeah. I can tie it. You, you, tie new, you, you, you tied on a new trace as we was going, she wasn't happy with the trace, do you remember? No, I just want to take any risk. Yeah, yeah. No risk was no, at all. Every single percent. Had to be, yeah, every one percent. Yeah. That was amazing. But um, yeah, doing the podcast off the back of that was fantastic, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, buddy. So um, I think we're getting close to the end. Yeah, we don't know how long we've waffled for, but we've waffled for a little while. And we're good at waffling. Yeah, I think we can actually try and stick to our guns this time and keep the, the season ender to a bit of a shorter episode. Yeah, yeah. I think that'd be nice. It would, yeah. Right, I don't think we've got much else to say. No. Um, we sort of covered everything. I wanted, so I wanted to get Tom in there and say, say well done to Tom for, for catching that big fish because Tom O's one of, the, one of the nice guys in Lure Angler. Oh, yeah, and, and I've got to say something as well. Have you? Yeah. I right. to say well done to Luke Jordan for winning Lure Angler of the Year. Yes. Saw Obviously, that. not enough of you bastards voted for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it, it was great to be nominated, and Luke won it. So, well done, Luke. That's a brilliant achievement. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit jealous of those Andrew catchers. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hunt them down, mate. Hunt them down. They're there to be caught. They are, yeah, yeah. So well done, well done, Luke. That was very good, and well done to all the other guys that got nominated as well. Yeah. And I think also Angling Times because Angling Times are pushing. I mean, I suppose I'm being a bit critical. There's loads of different categories. I kept seeing all these things popping up. But you kind of think. Well, I actually think I think they trimmed it down a bit. There used to be a lot more. Really? Yeah, I think there's there's Matchman of the Year, Carp Angler of the Year, Specimen Angler of the Year, Lure Angler of the Year. Then there's. Um, venue, team of the year, venue of the year, yeah, team of the year, venue of the year, club of the year, and match of the year. I think it was club of the year. Yeah, people in district won it. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's still still good though. It, recogn yeah. it recognises people's hard work and achievements. This is it. It's got to yeah. be good. Yeah, it's got to be good. Right, guys, we'll bring us to a close. Thank you for all your support throughout this this year, this calendar year, mm. and for season two. We're all back in season three, and I'm thinking June time. But we've got a lot of moving parts. And uh, we need to recharge batteries and also work out how we can fit in all the 
Logistics. Logistics. Logistics is always the issue. Good luck, mate. Thank if, you, mate. If everything you're doing in the future Cheers. is brilliant. And again, from me, thanks for everyone who's, who's joined us since the start of this in season one and all the way through season two. And a lot of you have watched absolutely every single episode. And that, that's the guys we really, really, really do appreciate. You've shown us some long-term committal. We like it. Well, again, we had a nice comment today. It, it, yep. it makes all this worthwhile when people yep. send us in comments. Yep. Anyway, guys, have a lovely Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. Happy New Year. Keep safe out there. Keep fishing. And we'll see you sometime next year. See you soon.